It's the Monday Night Results Show. Just the results, and nothing but the results. From this past weekend's race at your favorite racetracks, if you're looking for a lot of happy talk and fluff, tune into the Disney Channel. And now, the man with a mind for statistics. Unfortunately, those statistics are usually odds on the ponies in Vegas. Mitch, the Dr. Walker. All right, welcome back to the Monday Night Results Show. My name is Mitch Walker. They call me the doctor, and we are here to bring you a jam-packed, locked and loaded show tonight. We have got a ton of stuff coming, and uh, tell you what, let's kick it off the way we're supposed to each and every week with our Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, tonight on the show, we're going to talk just a little bit about Indy cars a little bit later on. Uh, later on in the show, we've got some big news coming up about a special a one-time special happening at Cleveland Speedway coming up. Also, in the first segment, we're going to have a young man named Pearson Lee Williams joining us on the show. A little bit later on, um, representative from Big Country Speedway, Cheyenne, Wyoming, Amanda Jogadich is going to join us. And a little bit later on, towards the end of the show, we're going to have Mr. Mike Budka join us. With Mountain View Speedway, we're gonna me and him's gonna talk a little bit about keyboard Rambo's, some of the things that the internet has done to the world of racing. All right, we're gonna step out for a quick commercial break, and when we come back, we've got another very special guest from out in Wyoming. First one we've had from Wyoming, so uh, sit tight, don't go nowhere. It's the Monday Night Results Show with me, your host Mitch Walker. They call me the Doctor. And we'll be right back exclusively right here on the Performance Motorsports Network. They say numbers don't lie, but we found that with a little tequila and some weed, the timing and scoring people will. Wading through the fog, it's the doctor. All right, welcome back. It is the Monday Night Results Show. And boy, we are locked and loaded tonight. We are ready to go. But without further ado, and I always say that because I love saying that word, ado. Joining us on the phone right now from out in the big country speedway of Cheyenne, Wyoming, Miss Amanda Gajodi. I'll butcher that one. I'll tell you what. It's spelled, it's pronounced Jagadish. Jagadish. Okay. I, I'll get it right here in a minute. I got my tongue wrapped around my eye tooth and I couldn't see what I was saying. Well, it's, it's not an easy one, so we'll forgive you. All right. Thank you. Now, tell us a little bit about big country speedway. Well, Big Country Speedway has been here since 1948. We're almost 70 years old. We're one of the few tracks in the nation that have never failed to open for a single season. We've had some rough ones, but we always make it. Um, it's, it's got a lot of history. It's currently ran by a nonprofit called the Wyoming Auto Racing Club. The owner lives in Loveland, Colorado, and we rent the speedway from him, and we've been doing that for several years now. How big is, how big, is big Country? It's a fifth-mile paved asphalt oval. So you so got you guys run on a weekly basis? We do. We run every Saturday night from May through September. The first weekend in May and the last weekend in September is our season. It's kind of tough in Wyoming. We've got rain and we've got snow predicted tomorrow, so we may be either boat or sledding, but we're going to try to race again on Saturday. Well, now, now you mentioned snow. You know, it was a uh, year before last. Now, people think here in, in Georgia, down in the, in the southeast, we don't have that problem, but we had a race snowed out. Wow. Snow, snow rolled in just as they started the feature. And as wow. long as they were going, it was okay because the, as old Daryl Walter says, the vortex effect kept the snow from, from being a problem. But once they went under caution, you couldn't see from one end of the straightaway to the other. And the drivers right. were pulling in going, I can't see. And if I can't see, I ain't mashing on it. So they wound up calling the race and, and listing the cause of the, the cancellation as snow. 
which well, that was a first for me in my 40 something years of racing. I had never been in a racetrack that had been snowed out. Yeah, well, we've been out the day before with plows and plowed the, the racetracks. Now, do you do you guys do you draw from a pretty big pretty big area there as far as your drivers? Well, fairly. Um, being the only paved track in Wyoming, there's a dirt track up in Casper, and there's one in Sheridan, but those are very north parts of Wyoming. There's Colorado Colorado National Speedway just to our south, which is a much larger track. But for your local drivers that don't have the big big first, you know, pocketbooks to fund racing with, we're about it. So we draw from Nebraska, Colorado, and Wyoming, all three. What's your What's your average car count out there at Big Big Country? Oh my goodness! I don't know if I could give you an average. It's been such a the last few years have been such an up and down. You know, you changes in management and this and that and the other thing. Um, you know, we had an opening night last year and had eighteen super socks. You know, somewhere in that neighborhood, 10, 12 of other classes. This year has been a little rough because it's rained every single weekend. So we're hoping that as soon as the rain goes away, the drivers will return. I don't know that there's such an average. I mean, it's just hard to tell. In this state, with the weather, it makes it difficult. If it's cold and yucky, they just don't want to come play as much. Yeah, that, that, that makes sense. I mean, how many classes or divisions do you run? Well, we have the late model, Grand American Modified. Warriors, which is our little beginner class, you basically take a Ford Escort, put a roll cage in it, safety feet, safety features, and run it. Super stocks, pure stocks. We have the high plane modified, super light trucks, and the Legends run here as well. Well, I tell you what, I know that uh, I am tickled to death to have a an asphalt track. I mean, for the two years that we have, I have been on Performance Motorsports Network, we have focused mostly on dirt. And this year mm-hmm. we decided that, that that was that needed to change, and that we had focused mostly in the southeast, and we picked up uh, Cotton Bowl Speedway and Heart of Texas Speedway out in in uh, Texas, and we've started covering mm-hmm. some in Arizona. Uh, we've started coming covering some up in the northeast, and uh, so now we've got some in the northwest, and we're just tickled to death to have you guys on board. Well, we're thrilled to be here, and you know it's funny with the with the small town racetracks such as ourselves we've got generations that have ran out here you know we've got kids saying my grandpa ran a super stock we've got a family out here we've got mom dad and two kids that race well you know that right there that that's the thing that gets me because i love family sports you know that, that where the whole family can participate and be a part of it and like we were just talking with young Pearson Lee Williams, his mom is very, very passionate about her son's racing. And there's a lot of, of families here in the Southeast that race together, you know, father and daughter race together, brothers, uh, dad and son. Mm-hmm. So it, it's, it's great. And I think the, the smaller classes, you know, the smaller tracks like big country, I think that's one of the things that, that really makes those tracks unique and brings them to the forefront, and that's what we try to do here on the Monday Night Results Show, is highlight the little guy, the guy that that pours his heart and soul into that race car each and every week just to go out there and run one night a weekend. Exactly. And, you know, with with that family, the youngest one, I believe, is 13, and he's out there racing a race car, and he climbs out of it, and you kind of look at him like, wow, did you see over the steering wheel? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) You know, it's funny. It's funny you mentioned that, Amanda. There was that in my years of officiating at North Georgia Speedway a couple of years ago. We had a a young driver who was racing racing in our pony division, our four cylinder class, and we mm-hmm. we used a single file restart. And this guy, this young man, kept pulling up, trying to go double file. Well, they told him over the race receiver three times, single file, single file, single file, and he just kept pulling up double file. So Mm -hmm. they black flagged him and they sent him to the pits and they come over the radio and they said, doc, go down there and tell him why he got black flagged. So I go down there and he pulls up in the pits and I walk over to his car and I pull my headset off. He pulls his helmet off and I looked and it was like, my God, isn't it past your bedtime, son? (laughs) He looks at me, Amanda, and he goes, sir, I'm terribly sorry, but my race saver was just all garbly gook. I couldn't understand nothing that was saying. And I that said, man, I said, buddy, they, they wanted you to go single file. 
He said, I feel like such an idiot. I'm terribly sorry. Will you please tell him in the tower that I'm sorry? And I thought, you know, yeah. if we had more racers like that, this world would be a whole lot better place. I, that's for sure. We had a cute one last year. We have a young lady that raced. She was 15 or 16 at the time. And with our warriors, our little four cylinders, every now and then, just for fun, we make them go backwards. Uh-huh. So they're having a racetrack the other direction. So they called it. She had never done that before. And they said, we're going to run in reverse. She put the car in reverse and went to back up. <laughs> 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 no, honey, <laughs> you don't have to drive that way. You don't have mirrors. That's not going to work. <laughs> well, you know, here in the South, we have a saying for things like that. It's called bless our little heart. Exactly. Exactly. And she's a very pretty little blonde girl. And so she got away with it quite well. We all just laughed, but it was pretty cute. Well, now, so, Amanda, what, what events the- do y'all have coming up in the near future that, that you'd like to tell people about out there at Big Country Speedway? Well, on um, May 30th, we're having a military appreciation night. Budweiser is going to be in-house, and they're bringing out a really big, nice truck that's all decorated for the military, and they'll be doing some fun stuff with the folks in the stands, I'm sure. And then on June 13th, we're having a PMG Grand American Modified, which is a national series. They go all over the country and run modified races. So that's going to be 125-lap main, which will be interesting on our little track because there's nowhere to pit. So we'll basically have to have a intermission so they can refuel <laughs> there's nowhere else to do it so we'll just have to stop on the track the crews will have to come out fill up the gas tank and they'll keep going um there august go. 22nd we're having the vintage oval racers come which is really fun so just they're more they're an exhibition obviously because they're not equipped with today's safety equipment and um in august we're also having a pastors race it's got a pretty big church here that has five pastors so we're going to stick the five of them in race cars and let them go so that should be pretty entertaining. And then, of course, we just have our regular Saturday night racing. The Legends Qualifying Series comes through here in July, I believe. So we always have fireworks and all kinds of fun stuff going on. Do you, are you, are you, are you kind of out in the country a little bit, or are you, you in a more of a city atmosphere? Well, this is Wyoming. Let me give you a perspective. The entire population of Wyoming is smaller than that of Oklahoma City. So moving here from Oklahoma City, I was, where are the people? We are right outside of Cheyenne, which is the capital of, of Wyoming. So as uh-huh. far as Wyoming goes, it's a city, but you'd have to take that in perspective. <laughs> About okay. 60, so it's not very big. Well, you know, we have a racetrack down here that, that was um, run last year. They're not running this year. It was called Arkadelphia Speedway. And I went down there um, to work as a, a uh, photographer last year and when i first went down there they told me well it's kind of out in the middle of nowhere I said but it's easy to find I said it's surrounded by cornfields and a river there and you go. i thought well okay tree. that won't be too hard to find i found the cornfields and there was a big dust bowl swirling up in the middle of the cornfield so i said well that's bound to be the racetrack and sure enough it was but it, yep. it's we have a few of them around here that are that are scattered out in the middle of nowhere and uh, it kind of works out to the to the benefit you know there's a couple of them that are located in town or that are closer to town dixie speedway is real close to atlanta and they have a curfew right. there boyd speedway right. is real close to chattanooga tennessee which is just up the road for me and they have an 11 o'clock curfew there whereas north georgia they're out in the middle of nowhere out here in chatsworth they don't have a curfew Cleveland Speedway up in Cleveland, Tennessee, they don't have a curfew. So there's a few, you know, we got kind of a mix around here where where we can, if you want to race, you can find a place to race. Right. Well, and, you know, Cheyenne is, is, is just an old-fashioned town. And one of the things that tickled me to death is there's a housing development not too far behind the Speedway. There's a big hill, and it fins up on top of the hill with chain link. You can look up there on a given Saturday night if it's warm, especially. And here's this row of little faces because they they can't afford to get in the speedway. These little kids don't have money. So they're sitting there just watching through the fence. And all I can think is that is future racers, that is future fans. That is awesome. So I try to talk our drivers into walking up the hill and talking to them and giving them autographs and stuff because it, it's just adorable to look up there and see their little faces just excited as they can be watching the races. 
Oh, well, you know, man, uh, we, we do a thing around here. Well, we did up until this past year. We called it Tear Down the Fence. At North Georgia Speedway, we would take all the drivers that would show up early, and we would take and put them up on the grass right in front of the grandstands and do an autograph session. And I thought when we first started doing this, I thought this is going to be cool. These kids are going to love this. These kids are just going to have a ball getting to meet all the drivers. Well, you uh -huh. know, after about 30 minutes of the first autograph session that we had, I realized that I was wrong. Yeah, the kids were having a good time, but it was the drivers who was having a good time. These drivers uh -huh. were all grinning, sparkling eyes, man. They were giving stuff away. One driver gave away his own gloves. And he, I said, man, what are you yeah. going to do for gloves tonight? He said, man, I, they sell them in the truck over there. I'll go get me some. But that, that's, that's, right. that's the kind of thing that we look forward to at racetracks around here is, is driver participation, you know, getting the drivers involved. And hearing you talk about sending the drivers up there to go talk to those kids, that, that just makes it that, more, that much more special. It is. We allow the, the fans to come into the pits after the races are over, and the kids will make a beeline for various drivers' pits because they will give away their trophies. You can only have so much plastic in the house. Yeah, so these that's kids right. just come running, wanting to be the first mm -hmm. person to get there so they can get a trophy. And, you know, all good. It's just awesome. So, and, you know, the thing is, too, when kids want to go to the races, they're going to bug mom and dad long enough that hopefully they'll bring them. And, you know, Amanda, that, that's so true. But also, like you said a while ago about those little kids, you know, that might be the next promoter or that might be the next car owner or the next driver. You know, you, you right. never can tell. Maybe one day, 20 or 30 years from now, when they'll be at the Brickyard in Indianapolis on Memorial Day weekend and one of those stupid reporters sticks a microphone in a car owner's face and he'll say, yeah, I remember years ago when I was a little kid, I couldn't afford to get into the races out there at Big Country Speedway in Wyoming, but the drivers came up to the fence and talked to us. Right, exactly. And, we and have you know, a, we have a they're tow the company. future of our sport. They are. And we've got a tow company that's been involved with our speedway just forever, Doug Towing. And he, when he gets in a car, you know, through a wreck or something like that that can make a good warrior, a little four cylinder, he builds it. And he brings it out there, and he's got, I don't know, five or six of them running with various drivers in them, just letting people get a, get a feel, see if they like it. Sometimes they go on and buy that car from him, sometimes they don't. But at least it gives them a chance to try. So we sure yep. appreciate folks like that that help us promote the sport. Well, I'll tell you what. Let, let's do this. Get What's the name of that tow company? Doug's Towing. I'll tell you what. Get me in touch with Doug. I okay. want to get Doug on the show. Okay. Well, it's Terry and Kathy is the owner, but I will certainly get you in touch with them. Okay. That, that'll be great because I want to, I want to hear his take on why he, why he does that. I mean, me and you both know why he does it, but I, right. I want to let more people know about things like that, about people who are willing to go the extra mile to get fans, to get a, a fan a chance to get in a race car and get out there and give it a whirl. Well, and they, they've been a huge supporter of us. They do our tow surface every weekend, and they, if a driver needs a rollback ride home, they never charge him. I mean, they're just, they're just great people and great supporters of racing and Big Country Speedway. Well, Amanda, you have my phone number. Give it to them and have them give me a call one day this week, and okay. we will line that up for next week's show. That sounds like a good plan. I love it. I mean, we're all about helping the little guy. And, and you know, for somebody who, who stands up and does that, that, man, that's a bang up thing. I tell you what, Amanda, we're up against the break. I was going to keep you around and do the results for Big Country Speedway, but I have them here in front of me. I will put those in the rotation and I will get those here in just a little bit. And I will, I will let you go. Uh, thank you so much for joining us on the show tonight. Well, thanks for having me. I appreciate it anytime and, and put us in touch with Doug's towing and we will get them on the show next week or maybe the week after whichever is convenient for them because I really want to hear more about this so uh, look forward to, to having you on the show again and, and adding your results to our results page every week well thank you so much all right Amanda from Big Country Speedway tell you what we're up against a break we're going to step out and when we come back we've got some results we've got some 
interesting things going on. We're going to cover a little bit of news. We're going to, we got all kinds of things going on. We're going to be talking about a video from Highland Speedway up in Highland, Illinois. So uh, don't go nowhere. It's the Monday Night Results Show with your host, me, Mitch Walker. They call me the doctor exclusively right here on the Performance Motorsports Network. When we come back here in just a few minutes, we have got a bunch of results, and I'm going to jump into these results hard and heavy. I have got I-75. I have got Dixie. I have got Winder Barrow. I have got, uh, man, I've got a ton of them listed here. We are going to try to get all of these in that we can. Um, I'm looking forward to adding Big Sky, Big Country. I keep wanting to call it Big Sky, but uh, I'm looking forward to adding Big Sky, Big Country, Big Country, Big Country, Big Country, Big Country, Big Country to our rotation of tracks each and every week. Uh, most of our Texas tracks got rained out this weekend, so uh, we're going to be adding a few more and keeping it interesting. And uh, then a little bit later on, Mr. Mike Budkick is going to join us from Mountain View Speedway. So uh, sit tight. Don't go nowhere. We still got a whole bunch to bring you. Got the whole second half of the show coming up here in just a few minutes. So sit tight. Don't go nowhere. It's the Monday Night Results Show with your host, me, Mitch Walker. They call me the doctor exclusively right here on the Performance Motor. You're listening to the Monday Night Results Show on the Performance Motorsports Network. Racing information at its best. And now back to the doctor of statistics. Now, one of the things that we're going to be talking with, with uh, Mike Budke about here in just a little bit, we're going to get on to this, and it is uh, social media. Now, I'm going to bring up one por- portion of this right now. When you look at the social media and you think, you know, has it helped racing or has it hurt racing? I think one of the things that it has done, it has really helped racing. And here's why. It has given racers a way to stay in touch, to give some input into the racetracks. There are some racetracks that that just take all the input they can get. They love the input from the drivers. Some racetracks, not so much. Some racetracks open their their Facebook pages to comment. Others do not. And, you know, I I recently done a, I won't call it a survey, but it is kind of a, a sampling. I went around and I looked at about 15 or 16 different Facebook pages for different racetracks. Which ones allowed comments? And which ones didn't of the ones that didn't allow comments or input from the fans and and the drivers were the racetracks that were extremely successful from a bottom dollar viewpoint. Now take Dixie Speedway. They have a Facebook page. It's not very active. It's not updated very often. And they don't allow comments. But when you look at Dixie Speedway, Dixie Speedway is in the outskirts of Atlanta. It has a huge metropolitan area to draw from uh, with over 2 million fans, available fans right there. It's easy for them to fill the grandstands each and every week. But when you take a racetrack, say, like Big Country up in Wyoming, they don't have a huge fan base to draw from. So the fans that they do draw are the dedicated ones, the ones that are really passionate about racing. Do they have good comments to make? Sure. But it also brings up a lot of things that is kind of bad. That is what me and Mike are going to be talking about here in just a little bit. Some of the keyboard cowboys. Some of the CB, or the, we used to call them the CB Rambos, uh, the keyboard Rambos. You know, they're real big to jump on a, on a website or a Facebook page and go to bashing. Little do they realize just how serious they can do damage. If you take and you look at some of the racetracks around that have, say, oh, an average of 1,000, 1,500 people in the stands, 
Those people look at their Facebook page to see what's coming up at the next event. And all they see is a bunch of bad mouthing and bitching and moaning and groaning. Well, you know, that's going to make them have second thoughts. Is this where I really want to go spend my money? Is this where I need to be taking my children? And, you know, no matter how you look at it, kids are the future of the sport. They are where we need to be reaching out for new fans. Yeah, there is a lot of people out there that show up at racetracks. Some of them have never been to a racetrack before. And you get them to a racetrack, you've got a new fan. Okay, how long is that fan going to be going to the races? 10, 15 years, maybe. But when you get a child, somebody who's, who's, who's never been to the racetrack before, they get to go out there. They get to see the races for the first time. They get hooked. You've got a fan for life. You've got a 40 or 50 year fan right there. You look around in the grandstands nowadays. The average age in the grandstands is getting up there, getting up there pretty high. More people need to start taking kids to the races. It is something that helps promote the sport. It gives kids something good to devote their time to. You know, somebody said that, that um, if you take a kid racing, get them involved in racing, you won't have to worry about them getting hooked on drugs. They won't have no money left for drugs because they'll be spending it all on, on race cars. You know, it don't have to be dirt track. It can be asphalt, it can be lawnmowers, it can be truck and tractor pulls. Uh, it don't matter. SCCA. You know, SCCA has an awesome program. If you want to get involved and you want to start racing, go to scca.org and click on the Get Involved banner up there because that is a great way to get involved if road racing is your thing or timed events, uh, kind of a Jim Hanka solo event. If that's what you're into, you have an import, that's your, your way of going, go for it. But what you need to be looking at is getting young people involved because we have to keep our sport growing. That is something that we need to keep at the forefront of our minds when we get going to the races. You need to take young people racing. Get the fan base younger. We don't want to get all these old folks to all die off and then there ain't nobody there to go to the races. You know, me and uh, Gary McCuller, my buddy Hot Dog, and Big Steve Hickson, we're not going to be around forever. We need somebody to pick up the mantle and take over. And they need to get started right now. Well, there's a bunch of them out there and we're looking forward to seeing each and every one of them at a racetrack somewhere real soon but i tell you what we're going to step out here in just a minute we're going to take a break i want to remind you stop by performance motorsports network's facebook page hit the like button if you hadn't already done it go hit it go hit that like button and i dare you to post on there the doctor sent me also you can go by and hit the monday night results show there's been a ton of people going by and hitting the like button over there, and I love it. Thank you, each and every one of you who's been by and hit the like button in the past couple of weeks. Y'all have uh, really blew up my phone, and I don't mind a bit. Blow it up some more. Make that thing go off constantly. Tell you what, we're going to step out and take a quick commercial break. When we come back, we're going to have a very special guest, and me and him are going to sit down and chew the fat. So don't go nowhere. It's the Monday Night Results Show with your host, me, Mitch Walker. They call me the doctor exclusively right here on the Performance Motorsports Network. It's the Monday Night's Results Show, the internet radio show that gives you the results from your favorite racetracks. And that's it. If you're looking for a lot of happy talk and fluff, go watch NASCAR coverage on ESPN. Now, here's the doctor. All right, welcome back. And, you know, like the commercial said, if you want to be part of the show, call and ask for Sue. It's her birthday today. Of course, tomorrow it won't be her birthday, but you can still tell her happy belated birthday. Sorry, you heard about it on the Monday Night Results show. Tell you what, we're going to jump in here because this is our last segment. We got the, the white flag in the air and we're rolling down the road. Joining me right now, a man who, who has a talent for resurrecting racetracks, Mr. Mike Budkid. Mike, how are you doing tonight, buddy? 
Good morning, sir, or good morning, good afternoon or evening for you, sir. How you doing? Man, I'm finding a frog hair split three ways and sanded. I'll tell you what, you must be a busy man. You calling it morning time. Yeah, well, you know, running racetracks, it's kind of a full-time job now. <laughs> and and you, you, have, you have got a knack for resurrecting old racetracks that have been closed down, haven't you? Well, I, I got one out of two running right now. So the other one's kind of uh, remains to be seen, but... Yeah, we we've got one out of two uh, we brought back to life from North Carolina. So the one that we're running now has actually been closed for 17 years. So we got it up and running again this year. So. And yet y'all had pretty good car counts there. Eh, not too bad. Um, the thing is, uh, the track is probably three miles from the Blue Ridge Parkway up in the mountains, um, just outside of Boone, North Carolina, and. Uh, being the, the track was closed for 17 years, a lot of people got out of racing, forgot about racing, what have you. Um, we have many folks, we, we keep hearing about more every day that are building cars, coming back to the track. I talked to one person Saturday night, and they said that every time they come to the track now, it's like a family reunion, seeing people that they haven't seen in years. So um, our main goal is to be where it's not only affordable, but um, family-friendly and we try and get people out of there at a decent hour. That's our goal. We don't try and run 15 classes a night. You know, we don't have high purses, but then again, our our prices are, are reasonable. I mean, I don't know of a stock car track anywhere in existence where you can go and watch a race for $8. So, you know, that's what we're trying to do, try to keep it affordable for families. So, and, and, you know, really and truly, Mike, and, and we have talked about this on the show many, many times with different promoters from all over the country. It's these guys are not racing for money. I mean, the money helps and the money helps, you know, further their program a little bit. But they if most of these guys really and truly would race if all you done was give them a trophy. Well, you know, and, and that's true. And we're also seeing at our track, which I've been to a lot of tracks up and down the East Coast over the course of. 44 years okay i'm seeing a lot of guys racers helping racers we had an incident saturday night where a guy you know unintentionally got into another guy and put him in the wall his crew and him were over there as soon as the race was over helping him put his car back together for the feature i mean you know we're seeing a lot of of, of involvement here with the drivers the community we're getting great fan support we're getting great um, support from the businesses around Boone. We're getting new sponsors every week. You know, I think people are really excited and glad that racing and some form of entertainment is back up on the mountain in Boone. So, you know, that's what we're trying to trying to keep our <laughs> our program. That's that's the the essence of what we do here. It's you know we're we're trying to keep it family oriented where they can afford it and also come out and see some some good racing and have a good time but you and I both know with everything everything's now modernized and we have social media that works great for a racetrack but it also could hurt a racetrack you know and we've talked about it and you were talking a little bit about them I call them keyboard heroes you know they're they're quick to bash a racetrack you know, and, and point out things that they feel the track's doing that they don't think is, is right, but they don't see the good things that the track's doing. You know, they're quick to point out the things that they have a problem with, but they're not quick to point out the things that the track's doing in the right. So social media's great, but it's also got its bad points, too. <laughs> well, you know, Mike, we, we have talked about this before, and, and one of the things that, we, I have determined, I mean, I've watched this as, as the announcer and the special events director at North Georgia Speedway for five years um, and being around racing all my life, you know, for 40 plus years. Some people, and, and this, this applies to every single racetrack in the country, some people would bitch if they was hung with a new rope. <laughs> oh, you're absolutely right. I mean, I, I have several people that I know that run racetracks in different parts of the country, and it's the same thing. They go through the same thing, whether it's people bitching about the track surface or the purses or a bad call. They're quick to get on there and bash the track, you know. But when the track kind of lashes back, 
and it's a different story. You know, it's 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 a no win situation with the social media. I mean, you're never going to please everybody, whether it's on the on the pit side or the grandstand side. You know, that's just unfortunately that's just the way this business is. Well, you know, I learned a long time ago that if you if you're going to be involved with the the operations of a racetrack. You really and truly, you have got to develop thick skin, you know, because people are going to bitch at you about every little thing that happens. But, right. you know, I think when it boils down to it, Mike, it's this, it's discouraging sometimes with the amount of negativity that uh, a, a racetrack can generate, whether it be the, the promoter's fault, whether it be a, a bad racing service, whatever the case may be, if a, if a track takes a stand and says, Hey, no, we are not perfect, but we are working towards making it that way. We're doing the best we can. I have seen in, in my experience that that right there stands up and says a whole lot about the promoter and the people running the organization that they're working to try to improve things. Nobody is perfect. And I right. think that, that when you have a racetrack that just stands back and just ignores the fans and ignores the drivers. Don't want to hear the comments. Don't want to hear the suggestions. You know, that right there tells you, you know, they think that, that their poo poo don't stink. And right. from what and I've seen with you guys over there, you guys are willing to listen to, to, to some of the suggestions. And I know that some of the suggestions, man, some of those, some of the people that are making those suggestions are smoking the stuff that killed Elvis. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, and it's, and I, I, I agree with you. And the bottom line is, though, me and my staff run the racetrack. The racers don't run the racetrack. And if the racers are running your racetrack, then you really need to rethink your operation. Because at least at our track, we run the show, not the racers. And it's not going to be like that. You know, and, I, and I'm not going to point fingers at other tracks, but I've seen it over the course of the years. Drivers try and, and, and hold the track hostage and tell them it's going to be this way or the highway. Well, there's the gate. If you don't like what we're doing, there's plenty of other tracks to race at. I mean, we feel that we're trying to do the best. We have a good core group of racers that are supporting us, and it's getting bigger every week. And they see that we're trying. So we know we're doing, you know, going a step in the right direction when it comes to, you know, keeping this track going. Well, you know, Mike, one of the things talking about, you know, some of these people that, uh, they would bitch if they was hung with a new rope, they get on Facebook and, and other social media, Twitter and all those other ones and the, all the different forums and the message boards and what have you. And they just bad mouth up one side and down the other, but yet, you know, come Saturday night, where are most of them at? They're right there at the racetrack. And when you walk up to them. And you say, well, you know, I was reading your comments the other day. They just kind of smile and duck their head. Yeah, well, y'all are doing a good job. I appreciate what you're doing. And they kind of stick their hand out wanting to shake your hand. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. That's why I, I, that's why I label them the keyboard heroes. I mean, other people have. I, I've, called, been, I've heard people call them grandstand promoters. You know, I mean, there's there's several names for them. But everybody has, a, has their opinions, and every, that's fine. But everybody thinks that they know how to run a racetrack. Well, let me tell you, I'll be the first one to tell you, it's not easy. And I'll put anybody in my shoes for a night and see if they can run it any better. You know, that's that's what I, I tell people when they when they come to me and say, look, we're trying. You know, we're doing the best we can. I've been around this racing business for a long time. And I've been on both sides of the fence. So I know what a racer expects. I know what a fan expects. You know, it's it's kind of it's kind of hard to please everybody. And like I told you, you're never going to please everybody. So, but we try. I, I agree with you, Mike. You know, I think that, that when, when a track gets out there and they, they do the very dead level best that they can and they put it all on the line, that, that, that says a lot, you know, that they're, they're working towards achieving the goal of being a good family oriented, oriented racetrack that, that people can afford to go to. You know, there are, there are lots of people out there. There was a thread started a couple of years ago talking about, well, why don't you have any great big money races? Why don't you bring in so-and-so, or why don't you bring in the, the have a Tampa series or the world of outlaws or the Lucas series? You know, these people don't have a stinking clue what it (laughs) takes to bring in 
a big sanctioning body like that or the money involved? I can tell you. You want me to tell you? Uh, well, well, I outlaws, know. It costs. It costs them probably. It costs you probably attract twenty to thirty thousand to bring in the world outlaws for a night, on average. So, <laughs> yeah, it's not cheap. <laughs> oh no, it's not. And then you get into the stuff that nobody ever thinks about, and I never thought about this the whole time that that I, I had been around racing until I went to work at North Georgia Speedway. I never once thought about this. How many hot dogs do you order? Oh. <laughs> Uh, I couldn't tell you. Probably, my wife does all that. I'm probably saying between four and five hundred a week. <laughs> you know, so. when you when you've got a racetrack, you don't want to get stuck with all this stuff, and, and you know, have it go bad. So right. you don't want to over order, but you don't want exactly. to under order either, because nothing is worse than a racetrack with fans that can't get nothing to eat. Exactly. Yep. Yeah, I so, tell you people, know, you know, you're, when, you're when in it comes a quandary to, there to where. You know, do do I order ten thousand hot dogs here and hope that I can sell them all, or right. do I order five thousand and hope that they don't eat them all? You know, exactly. six of one, half a dozen of the other. Right, and you know, on, on Saturdays, I, I I've told people I wear many hats at the racetrack. I don't have one specific hat. I mean, whether it's officiating on the flag stand, track prepping, you know, making sure the concession stands. A racetrack owner or promoter, or they wear many hats. And if you can't handle that wearing many hats, then racetrack promoting is probably not for you. But if I didn't enjoy doing this, I wouldn't be doing it. I can tell you that right now. So, you know, and like I keep saying, we've got a good group of guys up there and ladies that are supporting us race wise. We've got an excellent fan count. I mean, um, the people are very appreciative up there in Boone that the track's reopened, and, and we see it every week. We do a lot of things for the kids. Like this week coming up, we're having kitty rides. We had candy giveaway Saturday. The week before, we had bike races. We do a lot of family-oriented stuff, and that was one of my main stipulations with this is we have to have the family involvement when it comes to the racetrack. That's got to be a priority, like, number one. So... You know, and it seems to be, uh, well, the first night we did kitty rides, uh, I talked to one of my guys that works at the track that lives up in Boone. He said that was a talk of Boone all week about the kitty rides, you know. So, you know, that's that's going to be a staple thing for us is doing things like that for the, for the kids and families. Well, Mike, you got anything coming up in the next week or two? Big plan for Mountain View Speedway? <laughs> yeah, actually, we've got a, what we're calling our first annual Turn Back to Clock Weekend, July 3rd and 4th. We're going to have mower racing Friday night, 500 to win 602 mod race Friday night, 1,000 to win enduro, 100 laps, and then some qualifying for some other events, some of the other classes the first Friday on Saturday night. Saturday, we're going to have a car show, which will be July 4th, swap meet, live music, flea market, mower racing, and stock car racing, the headline of the, the night. So um, we're going to have some antique and vintage race cars there. Um, we're going to try and make it an annual event every year. Um, next year we're talking about bringing in some rides and stuff like fair type. Uh, the track is located at the old high country fairgrounds in Boone. So it's been a long time since they had any kind of fair or any kind of activities there. So we're trying to trying to get, you know, other things going on there besides stock car racing, you know, for community involvement because up there on the mountain, um, a lot of people have said that they're really happy that there's things, different things and new things and old things that have come back to do up there. So, you know, we're trying to trying to do a lot of different things. That's our, our goal here in the future. Um, we plan on being there for a long time to come. So, um, Well, man, I'll tell you what. I am gonna, I'm going to do everything I can later on this summer. I'll see if I can't get over that way and uh, join you guys for a night of racing. Hell, who knows? We might even, you might even get a dunk tank, come over there and see if anybody can dunk the doctor. <laughs> hey, that's, that's, that's fine with us. We'll, we'll, we'll make it happen. Um, we, we have quite a, quite a large following from a lot of my friends and family up in the Northeast to down there in Florida and, um, you know, I, I've, I've, I've been around this a long time. So, you know, over the course of the years, I've learned some things. I, I've been involved with some other racetracks, but this one here has pretty much been, uh, me and my wife from, from start here, we've 
kind of started this thing, and um, we, we we were looking at trying to get Taylorsville open first. However, that track needs extensive amounts of work. The track in Boone, surprisingly, over 17 years was well maintained, so it didn't take much to get that track up and running. But um, we're having a lot of fun up there. We like the people up there. They've been really, you know, open with us and very friendly. So um, as of right now, Taylor's was on the back burner. Um, we'll see what happens in the future. But right now we're focusing on, on keeping this track and boon going and, and making it um, big and successful here. All right, well, Mike, I tell you what, man, we're we're out of time, but uh, we will work something out. We'll we'll come up with something. We'll come up there and we'll make it an event. We'll come All up right, there Mitch. and have a good time up there in Boone, North Carolina, over there at Mountain View Speedway, ladies and gentlemen. I want to thank everybody that's joined me tonight. Pearson Lee Williams uh, joined us in the first segment. Amanda from Big Country Speedway out in Cheyenne, Wyoming, and Mike from uh, Mountain View Speedway. I want to thank each and every one of you for tuning in. Uh, you know, without you guys, I wouldn't want to do this. I, I, I do it because I love the sport and I love bringing stuff to the fans. Mike, I want to thank you for joining me on the show. And, uh, hey, best of luck to you. And we will get up there real soon. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, y'all have a great week. Don't work too hard. And make sure you take a kid with you somewhere this weekend racing. Come see me up at Cleveland Speedway. I'll be up there working the Twin 25s and the Steelhead. Um, we'll be up there on the microphone. So come on up, check us out, say hi. And uh, we'll catch you next week right here exclusively on the Monday Night Results Show right here on Performance Motorsports Network. Y'all ready for this? The Monday Night Results Show is a copyrighted production of the Performance Motorsports Network. www.performancemotorsportsnetwork.com A member of the Scorpion Radio Group, Inc. and may not be rebroadcast, replicated, or saved in any media without the explicit written permission of PMN. Check out our Facebook page or our section on the PMN website. The opinions expressed on this program are those of the host, co host and guests and do not necessarily reflect those of the management and ownership of either PMN or Scorpion Radio Group Inc., the advertisers or the marketing partners. If you would like to hear the results from your local track or you are a track owner or a promoter and want us to cover your venue, give us a call during normal business hours, 717-749-0444. IM us on our Facebook page or email us at performancemotorsportsnetwork at gmail.com. Be listening again next week as we are talking results on the Monday Night Results Show with the doctor. For the Monday Night Results Show, I'm Big Mike.